Hey everybody, this is GGB co-host, no co-host Puppers. I'm so used to saying that every single time, but unfortunately co-host Puppers is on a, her walk right now, and I gotta record this, like, literally right now so that I can get to work, so I can have a fun Super Bowl Sunday weekend. But, uh, just to remind everyone, if you want to just skip to a certain portion of the video, let's say you only care about Big Ten basketball, just skip to the Big Ten section, and then you don't have to watch the rest of the stuff. If you only care about SEC, ACC, you know, that kind of stuff. Just just skip ahead. Uh, but let's get straight into this thing. There were five out of the eight games yesterday were upsets. Unfortunately for me, I picked one of the only three that weren't upsets, which sucks for me. But let's go through the SEC, what happened yesterday. Now, not much insanity happened yesterday, but there was a huge one. In South Carolina, an eight-point underdog upset Florida, dragging them down to six and four, which is ten and five overall. Now, Missouri rose from, I think, the five spot to the two spot, thanks to Florida and LSU losses, uh, and then beating Kentucky last night. So now we have, out. this is the top of the SEC with Alabama winning last night. We have Alabama at the top at 10-0 in conference, and likely no one will catch them, considering how dominant Alabama has been this year. Missouri sits at the two spot. Arkansas, which is an underrated team at the three spot. Florida at the four spot. And LSU at the five spot with Tennessee at the six spot. Now, I, I believe LSU is an overrated team. I've been saying this for a long time. LSU probably doesn't deserve to make the playoff. They're, they have an 11-6 record, guys. There's so many teams. There are a lot of teams that are, have better records than they are and better teams than they are. And they aren't getting in because LSU is being slated to get in. I honestly think LSU is a bad, basket, uh, bad basketball team, yeah. And I, I don't think they deserve to make it in. But that's how it affected uh, the SEC last night. South Carolina was able to rise from third to last place. All the way up to 8th place. 8th place. They rose from 12th to 8th place in the series of one day. Upset one team. And now, suddenly, this, this South Carolina team is starting to get it together. It's interesting. I, I, I'm looking forward to watching the Gamecocks as they go forward. Now, let's talk about the American. Another huge upset happened in this conference today. Uh, yesterday. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Houston was upset by East Carolina. I'd like to point out to everyone that East Carolina yesterday were 16-point underdogs. 16-point underdogs. 16-point underdogs aren't supposed to win bat the, the game. They just aren't supposed to do that. East Carolina did. They beat a top-five team in the nation. They were last place in the American. Now they aren't anymore. Now it didn't really hurt Houston that much. Now they set a 10-2 and record, which the closest team behind them has a 5-2 and record. So, I mean... Not that close is Wichita State, but East Carolina rose out of the last place in the American all the way up to second, third to last. Third to last. But they were able to pass two teams. Very impressive. Now they're only about a win away from passing Tulane. Uh, it, 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 they need Temple to lose as well for them to pass them. Now let's go over what happened in the ACC. Nothing huge happened. Virginia was able to avoid the upset against NC State, which is the team I picked to win. Virginia Tech was upset by Pitt, which dropped Virginia Tech one spot. So not a lot of craziness happened in the ACC yesterday. Pitt rose up, I think, one spot too. So again, nothing huge and insane happened in the ACC yesterday, but Virginia Tech did lose, so that's something to note. In the Big East... We have two huge upsets. Like, we're not just talking about huge upsets. Huge upsets. 14 and 9 point underdogs. Like, this isn't, oh, like in the ACC it was a 3.5 point under. These are 14 and 9 point underdogs. Georgetown pulled off the huge upset against Creighton last night. Like, honestly, Georgetown looked like the better team against Creighton. And that just shows you how deep the big East is. I thought Creighton, Creighton was. I mean, DePaul played a close game against them. And I'm like, eh, DePaul's just not that good. Georgetown's a better team than they are. But Creighton should win this game. They did not win that basketball game. Creighton moves to 2-5 and five in conference. Wait, I thought that would make them 3-5 and five in conference. But I guess not. I guess poor, 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 poor. Creighton, uh, Georgetown is only... Actually, no, they moved to 3-5. and five. I'm sorry. I didn't update it for some reason. I thought I did, but... They moved to 3-5. and five. They passed Butler. So they moved up a spot thanks to the win. Now, they definitely need to start racking up wins if they really want to compete in this Big East tournament. But big win for Georgetown last night. If we want to also talk about a big win last night, huge, huge upset last night. St. John's was able to upset 
Villanova. Now, I was saying that there was a shot that would happen. I, I'm saying, I was saying Villanova is probably the best team in the Big East, but everyone's overlooking St. John's, and maybe they're not Creighton, Xavier, or UConn, but they're definitely better than Seton Hall, Marquette, Providence, Georgetown, Butler, DePaul. I mean, St. John's is a pretty good team, like, that people overlook. And I was thinking maybe Creighton would have trouble with Georgetown, maybe just because they have trouble with teams they should beat easily. Like, let's talk about Butler a few weeks ago when Butler upset Creighton. Like, there are there is some points to be made why that was a foreseen outcome. But, I mean, they had trouble against DePaul on Saturday. They have a problem with teams they should beat pretty hand handily. That's the problem with I have with Creighton moving forward. But, dang, nothing really shook up in the Big East that much since the top two teams both lost. Uh, but now it puts uh, Xavier within sh shooting range, same with UConn, so, uh, interesting thing to mo look forward, moving forward. Now, there's two huge basketball games tonight, if you did not know, uh, two ranked teams, oh, three ranked teams are playing with two games, so at six o'clock, we have number seven, Ohio State, traveling to number eight, Iowa. Now, Garza, is at, Iowa's here by five points this game, it's on ESPN. Garza's on a streak of 17 games with double-digit points, longest, in major conference this season. Now, in Big Ten play, uh, obviously we have Michigan and Illinois at the top, so this is a big chance, big, big, big opportunity for Iowa to get back to that number two spot. Now, the chances are you're not going to win the Big Ten, mainly because Michigan just decided to put a halt to all its playing when they were doing great, so I don't know. I don't think you could pass them exactly, uh, but you can get to two with a win here for Iowa. If Iowa was to win this game, they would move to eight and three in conference, which would have be the same as Illinois. But the fourteen and four in conference better record, I mean overall record, is better than Illinois' twelve and five overall record. Iowa State, Ohio State, with a loss, would move to fourteen and five, eight and five overall, and would drop below Wisconsin to the five spot. Uh, so it's an interesting thing to look forward. No, look for moving forward is. If Ohio State's able to rise out of that spot, they were two not that long ago, but Ohio State would be at fourteen and five record with an eight and five overall record. That would drop them below Wisconsin, but not quite yet below Purdue, which that Purdue lost to Minnesota. Uh, Purdue win against Minnesota was pretty huge. But now we're looking at uh, a possibility where we have wait did Purdue. Purdue's the one that played Maryland, so that Maryland loss is looming pretty large for Purdue because they would have had a chance to pass Ohio State with a loss. Now, if Ohio State is to win this game, they move to 9-4 and four overall. I don't believe that's a better record than the 8-3 and three record Illinois has, so they would only move up one spot past Illinois. I mean, Iowa. I would fall to 7-4, and four, which would drop them below, obviously, Ohio State and Wisconsin, so that would drop them to the 5 spots. So whoever loses is likely in the 5 spot, and then depending on who wins, they're either in 2nd or 3rd place. So... Interesting thing atop the Big Ten. Now, if, obviously, if you're an Illinois fan, you're a fan of Ohio State this game so that you can stay in the two spot. Now, if you're a fan of Wisconsin, it doesn't really matter because you're moving up regardless of who wins or who loses. So that's definitely a good thing moving forward for all Wisconsin fans. And it doesn't really matter for Purdue fans. So obviously, the only thing it matters for if you are a team, it, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a Wisconsin fan or a Purdue fan. Uh, if you're an Illinois fan, obviously, you're an Ohio State fan today. So... If in the Big Ten we have, I mean, in the WCC, we have one game going on. Number one, Gonzaga traveling to Pacific on the CBS Sports Network. Gonzaga's favored by 23.5 points. Now, many people know that Gonzaga's undefeated this year. But the amount of upsets that happened yesterday, I wouldn't consider this unconceivable because of how many huge upsets happened last night that, it, that no one really expected. The 16-point upset of East Carolina over Houston was very crazy, but... Gonzaga sits 17 and 0 overall. Another win would likely just keep them in that. It would uh, a win or a loss keep they're going to stay in the one seed regardless. But the problem is whether they stay in the one seed overall. They don't. They still want to stay the number one team. And who, as soon as you lose, Baylor's going to pass you. So that's why Gonzaga desperately needs the win here now. With a loss, Pacific also doesn't move. So the likely outcome is nothing changes after tonight. But if Pacific was able to pull off the huge upset, they would pass St. Mary's, Pepperdine, and LMU, move up three spots into fifth place in the WCC. Uh, now, Gonzaga would not move at all. They just fall to 8-1 and one in conference, 17-1 overall. But that would result in a likely fall to either the number two spot or lower in the overall uh, NCAA uh, AP poll. So 
not that big of a deal for Gonzaga in conference. Now, out of conference, overall, big picture-wise, uh, it could be a pretty big loss if they were to lose to Pacific. So, which team is GGB going to pick to be upset? Technically speaking, I can pick Iowa to upset number seven in Ohio State, and that's what I'm doing. Even though Iowa's favorite at five points in this game, technically, since they are a lower-ranked team, I can pick Iowa to beat Ohio State, and I can still consider it an upset of the day. So, why do I think Iowa can beat Ohio State? I think it's because of Luka Garza. Luka Garza is such a huge uh, member of that team. Again, Luka Garza is probably the best player in the entire country. Now, Iowa has slipped recently. and if They've not looked their best, but I think this is where they can get it back on track, beat Ohio State, and move up back to that two spot where they kind of belong. I believe they're the second best team in the Big Ten. Hey, everybody. This is DGB saying adios, amigos, and go Hawkeyes.